he is just he's just a great guy and he helped me out so much uh, i couldn't be more thankful to him yeah you definitely saw him cheering from the sidelines the other night i mean the guy wasn't even in your corner and you could hear him scr- screaming instructions louder than some <laughs> other people in the in the arena so it, it's definitely nice to see and i, I have to say i'm uh, i'm very happy for the, your uh, success Tarek. thank you very much uh, yeah, dan, dan was a, was a, was in the corner I mean, it was on the other side of my corner, and, I, and when I was, that was good because on, on one side I had my corner, on the other side of the cage I, I had Dan, so that was, that was perfect for me. <laughs> yeah, you heard him screaming when Nate had you pushed <laughs> up against the cage, and he was talking to you, and you could hear him yelling out the instructions, and like the name says, sponge, you took it all in, and you absorbed <laughs> it, and you did it, so good for you, yeah, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations, Tarek, and we look forward to seeing you fight, whether it's in the UFC or wherever it is. We look forward to you having a bright future, so congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks so much for joining us on the Fight Corner. The MMA Fight Corner is sponsored by Fast Cash Title Loans with three great locations and rates at 9.95%. No, wait a minute. Let me correct myself. Mike is extending that at 7.95% right now. Wrong. Competitors tell you they're giving you half off, but half off of what? Our man Mike will not be beat or undersold. Call Fast Cash's new location at 702-822-4456. Tell them that Billy sent you and receive $50 off your first payment. And let me tell you about an amazing experience I've been telling you about for a few months now. I had here right here in Las Vegas. I recently had the LASIK procedure done to correct my eyes to better than 2020. I don't need glasses anymore, and I'm telling you it's like a miracle. Dr. Rothman and his staff, they were incredible through the whole process and extremely professional. I urge anyone out there who's thought about getting LASIK to speak with my doctor, Dr. Rothman. He offers a free consultation and 50% off premium LASIK when you mention my name, Billy Mira, and 0% financing available as well. Call 702-636-2010. That's 636-2010. You're going to be delighted you did. I know I was. I can actually see now, and it's a, a very scary thing because of some of the people I have around me. <laughs> You're listening to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. We'll be right back. The MMA Fight Corner. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. It all starts with the right balance of being active and eating well. You eat ants? You're going to love the way they tickle. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans to keep you and your family on a path to good health. Just the bare necessities of life. Just remember, every food group every day crazy start by taking small steps steps that add up to a happier healthier life try making half your grains whole or start adding fruit to breakfast me and baloo we've got things to do so eat right have a banana be active <laughs> now move that's it and have lots of fun yeah man for your own path to a healthier you visit mypyramid.gov oh man this is really living this message brought to you by the u.s department of agriculture and the ag council Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu. Oh, and I almost forgot, they have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know, it helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I was. Come on, come on, come on. JT the Brick with Tom Looney. I've been telling you that this is the year of Kobe with profanity, 
He uses it all the time. He's uptight because I think he realizes that this team is probably not built to win a championship. How dare this guy talk about age? First off, he should get on his knees every day and hit the ground and thank God that he plays for the Lakers. Okay, Kevin Love plays for the Wolves. Great city, great teammates, but it's not the Lakers. He could be like Anthony Davis, stuck in New Orleans, where he's going to have to play out his rookie deal, and it doesn't look like they're going anywhere fast. My point is, Michael Jordan, Derek Jeter, would never act this way. Never once would they talk about age and make excuses before the All-Star break. What you trying to do? This is JT the Brick with Tom Looney. JT the Brick, overnights from 10 to 3 on Fox Sports Radio 920. Have you ever dreamed of being a karate master? Well, stop dreaming and start chopping with the Karate Glove. Hi, my name's Molly, inventor of the Karate Glove, and I have just one and a half words for you. hi -ya! The Karate Glove chops through anything. Just put it on and instantly chop through wood, concrete, brick walls, trees, small cars. It can even chop through these eight guitars. It chops things. If I can invent a karate glove, just imagine what you can do. Visit inventnow.org to get started on your invention. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Brought to you by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, the National Inventors Hall of Fame Foundation, and the Ad Council. It's Haya time! Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685 4100. That's 685 4100. Randy, the natural code tour, and you're listening to the MMA Fight Corner. The MMA Fight Corner. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. Here with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Joey Vonner, and Heidi Fang. This segment is sponsored by LASIK of Nevada, live from LASIK of Nevada Studios on Fox Sports Radio 920. Um, we told you at the top of the hour that we're going to have Chad George um, joining us. He's an ex-WEC in Bam Bama, USA bantamweight, uh, who really has an awesome... A documentary. If, I, I recommend everybody trying to catch it if you have Netflix. I think you have Netflix, don't you, Phil? Yeah, I saw it. It was. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it a lot. It was really good. And I think he's joining us on the line right now. Chad, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's going on, Chad? Not too much, guys. How are you? Good, good, good. Now, good. now that documentary you were telling me how long ago did that documentary came out? Well, you know, wait, Chad. This this was filmed what in 2008? No, no, no. It was filmed in 2000, like end of 2009, 2010. Uh, okay, and and what what was the process that of being approached about doing it? Because I'm sure you know, being a professional fighter, it, it's kind of hard to have a camera on you for eight months. Oh, it's horrible! <laughs> it's horrible. I mean, it's like having you know, like you leave your home at 18 to get away from your mom, and now you got somebody watching over you every second again. It sucks. Yeah, it it had to be tough. Now, when you look back, and I'm I'm sure. After watching the documentary, like we the other day, we had Pat Barry and his girlfriend on the show, and they they were actually talking about just how much easier things are relationship wise because the two of them know what they go through and what it t takes to do this in this sport. Uh, how, would you say that this is true? I mean, I know there was an issue with your girlfriend going into the, in the movie. Uh, how hard is it when you have a loved one who doesn't know what you go through? It's tough, man. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely one of those things that unless your significant other has been with you, like, through the whole process of this, you know, like, like for me, I've been in the sport for a long time. You know, this will be my, my ninth year as a professional. And, you know, my girlfriend and I, we've been together for over six and a half years, over six years. And, um, you know, she, so she's been through a lot of the ups and downs in it. And I think, you know, it's tough for um, somebody to go into it without, you know, wanting to see you 
start making more money and start seeing the things happen. But uh, for her to kind of be as um, uh, supportive of it, I think it just takes time because, you know, it, it's definitely a heart, disheartening for, you know, to see things fall apart one time and another time and another time. And, you know, for, for your other to kind of stand by your side and be like, you know, this is all part of it. You know, I think that's that's huge. Absolutely. Now, what's going on with you now? I mean, obviously the documentary, uh, you know, they didn't have your last fight in there, but they had talked about, you know, what what you were doing after. Are you still doing the art? Are you, you know, are you still fighting? What's going on with you? Well, I'm still playing around a little bit with my art. I did a cool little fun series of, uh, I call it the greatest minds of jiu-jitsu. Um, just like everything else, I never finish it. Um, you know, I, I was going to do a series of like 10 different drawings, and I think I got through three of them. Um, but it was kind of, it was a fun little project that I probably will finish one day. But, you know, I did, like, like Yoda in a gi. Um, I did uh, Albert Einstein in a gi. And it was just kind of fun stuff, you know, looking at, like, um, you know, putting great minds and just together since, you know, they kind of go, go hand in hand. So, you know, that's kind of a little fun project that, you know, I played with for a bit. And hopefully I can get back to it. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, I am taking care of the injuries that, uh, that, that were going on in the film. So like right now, I just I went to my uh, my ortho today, and we decided that we are going to move forward with my back surgery, uh, so I can go ahead and get that taken care of. And I'm, I I truly believe this. Once I get that healed, it's been a long time. That this year will be the biggest year of my career. I just got to be healthy for it. Well, when is the uh, surgery scheduled? We haven't set a date yet. Today was the day that we just decided that we're going to do it. So absolutely, you guys are the first ones to know officially that. Uh, I'm going to be doing the back surgery. And, and what kind of surgery is it? We're, we're doing a uh, discectomy. Uh, I think I said that right. We're, we're, I, I have a 12-millimeter herniated uh, L5-S1, and which is causing um, uh, pressure on my sciatic nerve, and it's causing a lot of uh, strength um, problems in my, in my core and in my, my leg. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and get that, that fragment that's, that's herniated removed so I can start the whole rehab process again and I get back to my weight training and everything I need to do to be at the top levels. I mean, it's, it's literally been about three years since I've been able to do proper strength and conditioning. Right. Now, you know, the, I remember the doctor was talking to you in the documentary, and he spoke about how you were going to have problems in later life because of some of the issues you're having. Will this surgery help with that, maybe kind of alleviate some of that pressure when you get older? Absolutely. Um, the things I'm dealing with now are those problems that he was talking about. You know, it was one of the matter of time. Like, one thing we didn't talk about in the film, and, you know, we kind of did that intentionally, was that aside from, you know, you seeing me going there in the chiropractor, we were also doing cortisone injections uh, just to help me continue training. And over time, like, those just start, you know, you, you build a, a tolerance to it, and they stop working, and that's what's happened now. Wow. Wow, that's great. Yeah, it was it was nasty when you, you saw you sparring and you broke your finger, and you just kind of, all right, tape, <laughs> tape it up, let's go. It's, you know... Don't have time for injuries. Ain't got time to bleed. Ain't got time to bleed. <laughs> you know, I think that's the, that that's that uh, hard nosed wrestler in me. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, I have to say, congr You know, I have to congratulate you on the documentary. I mean, it, thank you. It was first released on Netflix and and uh, iTunes, and within one week, it broke into the top ten documentaries. So uh, it, it, it was huge. Um, like right now, I think by tomorrow, there should be twenty five thousand uh, ratings on Netflix alone. Wow. And, I mean, it's still been out less than two months on Netflix. Wow, that's great. That's great. Now, and, you know, uh, you, you, we heard some, uh, some rough numbers of, you know, one in every 100 people will rate it. So do the numbers with that, you know, and that's, that's a crazy amount of people that have, that have seen this film. You know, you talk about the cameras being on them for eight months and how difficult it's been on your relationship. But as well, how difficult was it being that brutally honest as a fighter? I mean, there was you were you were showing the real world of what a fighter goes through for those eight months, uh, and being completely honest about as far as the money that you make and what you go through was that difficult? Was it difficult a difficult process for you? You know, initially I thought it was going to be harder than it was, but I think I actually cared so much about the actual story getting out there because, in my opinion, it's a story that needed to be told. You know, everybody thinks that we, we have all these glamorous lifestyle and, you know, it's just, and that's just the lack of uh, education. So I think for me, it was my chance to really kind of have my part and say, hey, no, this is the real story. This is how it really is. And it's pretty incredible because I've had a lot of fighters reach out to me and say, thank you for telling the world this. 
Yeah, no, yeah. I, I remember last year I had a conversation with Danny Castillo, and he was talking about mm. when you lose a fight, it's just the loneliest, saddest time. And it's, it's like, horrible. Yeah, that no one even, you know, responds to you, no one's talking to you, you know, whether it be they're, they just want to leave you alone or they want to let you have your moment, I don't know what it is. But for you to have to sit there and be able to, to you know, this – I guess when you look at a documentary, you know, it's not written out. So you can't say, hey, you know what, here's where we insert the happy ending. Okay. Right. And, and, you know, you go through this eight months of torture and, and the training, and then you lose the fight. And then where it's considered the loneliest time, you have a camera right in your face. Ex and you're, <laughs> you're expected to express what you're feeling. W was yeah, was that harder than you thought it would be? You know, that part, it kind of was. But, you know, I think – timing of it was actually pretty incredible as well because I went through so many transformations in that short period of time. I think I kind of got used to kind of crazy stuff happening with the camera there. You know, I, I was homeless. I, I you know, I, I had that fight in the UFC. I mean, the WEC and all those things going on. And I don't know. It, it also, maybe it was just the comfortability with the director that everything just kind of started seeming comfortable to come out and it just seemed like the perfect timing. Yeah. Is that part when you when you're doing a documentary like that and you talk about going homeless? Obviously, the camera crew is not homeless. Or right. how does that process work? I mean, did they just go, "All right, we're going home now. Enjoy the floor. Enjoy the, we're gonna that, go enjoy the hotel." <laughs> right. I mean, is that like part of the honesty of filming a true documentary? Yeah, it was. You know, it was one of those things like, uh, you know, I, of course, I had friends are saying, "Hey, come stay with me and do this, that, and, you know." But for me, it was easier just to stay at the gym than have to worry about. When am I going to stay tonight? You know, uh, this is the place that I'm comfortable at. I can put my stuff here. And, you know, I don't know. It, it was, it was kind of nice to be away from other people, too, especially in that time that I was going through. Yeah, and I, I noticed that. I think it was after there was a, you had a breakup with your girlfriend, and they showed you living in the gym at one point, and it was really cool the way they lit the gym. You know, it, right, gave yeah, that, yeah. it gave that whole feel of everything that you were going through at that Emptiness, particular moment in time. Yeah. Darkness. Right, right. Absolutely. And like you said, Billy, I love the way, like this, it, like we said, no storybook <clears throat> endings, but this documentary truly shows what the life of a fighter is. It's not glamorous. I know some people think out there, you know, hey, we're rock stars. We get to, some people even get into the sport to just become famous. But once they get in, into it and they go through it, they realize it's not all fun and games. Yeah, it's kind of cool. You know, we've had people come out of the woodwork saying, you know, they were never a fan of the sport until they saw the film because they never realized how much athletes we are and how much we actually put into this. Actually, somebody just told me recently the other day that their favorite part about it was the fact that it shows that we're not just like guys that like their fight. We actually care about the result of what happens and where it takes us. Yeah, and, and I mean, even nerves before a fight, it, it's definitely, it showed everybody a different side of it, and I appreciated it for that. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank and you. Also, I mean, it was a great process to be a part of. You know, and you talk about a different side as well, and you brought up before your art. I noticed that you, in the film, were training with Dan Hardy. Mm hmm Now, both of you are artists, because Dan is coming yeah, up. Yeah, it's funny. We, him and I have been good buddies for a long time, and yet we kind of both knew that we both have, have done art. And, but we'd never seen each other's stuff. It was kind of funny. Yeah, because when you there was a point when you I guess you had an exhibit with a couple of other fighters, and their art was on display as well. But I was kind of like, wait, why doesn't Dan Hardy have his art there as well? You know. <laughs> um, well, it was because Mac and I, uh, Mac Danzig, who yeah. uh, is a good buddy and training partner of mine, and I mean you guys all know him from the UFC. Uh, he's an incredible photographer, and him and I had talked about doing this art show, and we were approached by this gallery. So it just seemed kind of like the right thing. We both had a lot of pieces that we wanted to show. So um, we figured, you know what, let's just make it our show and invite all of our friends. And um, uh, it actually turned out to be a great show. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. Not that, I don't, not that I'm saying you should stop the fighting, but, dude, you got a, a, a real talent there with the art, and I'd love to see more of it. I was very hey, impressed you, with your artwork, man. Thank you. You know, I, I did it professionally for a long time uh, before. Um, taking this this fighting stuff, to, you know, to the to the full the full throttle, and you know, it's just I, I enjoy doing it a lot for myself. I just I I can't do it for other people anymore. It's just something I I just can't stand. I can't stand the uh, the politics behind you know doing a commissioned artwork. So now after the back surgery, 
you plan to get in there and continue fighting? Is that the plan? Absolutely, 100%. I, uh, on Twitter, we're calling 2013 the year of the savage. This is the year that I will, I believe in the bottom of my heart that this is the year that the world is meant to know who I am. Not just because of the documentary, but because of what I bring to the table when I fight. I, I just need to be healthy for it. I'm going to take care of this, do my, uh, my rehab, hopefully get one more fight locally where I can make a big enough statement and then get on there on that platform and do it in front of the world. Well, Chad, I wish you the best of luck with it, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. I just, I know it's going to happen. You know, I just got to keep, keep grinding, get healthy. And then, um, like I said, 2013 is the year of the savage. That's it. The year of the savage. We know you work hard. So it could be, it could be in the ending, a storybook ending anyway, because you think about it in the film didn't have a happy ending, but the whole life, real life story now uh, may have a happy ending. You can make a comeback and, and make a run for it. And who knows what happens? Absolutely. I, you know, and I, whatever happens, I'm okay with. You know, it's like one of those things. You got to take every day, one day at a time, and you can't worry about what happens tomorrow. You just got to keep driving for, for something excellent and something good will always happen. Life is a series of experiences. <laughs> yeah, man. You got you to take the bumps with the good stuff, you know? That's it. Well, we look forward to seeing you fight again, and uh, we look forward to having you back here on the show. Hey, thanks, guys. I really appreciate the time. Absolutely. Thanks, Chad. We'll talk to you soon, Chad. So re really, it, 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 interesting documentary. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's called Occupation Fighter on Netflix, iTunes, and pretty much every medium out there. Yeah, it was a pretty cool movie. I think you were telling me about it, and I was, you know what, i got to go check this out, and I was delighted I did. I sat and watched it, but it is brutal. I mean, when you watch the, the process of just, you know, we talk about it, we're around it all the time, what these fighters go through. Uh, Joey, you see it all the time. It's amazing. People, you know, it, it is. It's like, you know, he was saying, a lot of people now, finally realize they get a glimpse and it still doesn't really give you a full idea of everything they're going through not at all dude it can get rough <laughs> <laughs> it, can, it can get rough <laughs> it can get rough <laughs> you know it's gonna get it's gonna get rough this thursday yes sir bellator on spike how excited i have to say i mean I, i'm a bellator fan i'm not a, the biggest fan of the whole tournament thing but i am a fan and i'm very interested to see what spike brings to the table yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I mean, if if you look, first off, their first night, he got two title fights. Not only two title fights, two great title fights. You excited? Billy, you excited? You're just looking at me like, Just what? jumping out of my pants right now. <laughs> just not just the title fights, fights, though. The, the, both title fights are, it's not just the title fights. They're awesome fights. Chandler Hahn, that's going to be a hell of a scrap. I mean, Chandler Alvarez, arguably fight of the year. You know, th when, when that happened, it was incredible. Han riding a three-fight winning streak, knocking people out now, looking sharp, changed camps, training with Faraz now as a hobby out of TriStar Montreal, really trying to evolve himself. That's going to be amazing. And then Pitbull versus Curran, I mean, oh. dude, it doesn't get much better. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. And if, if when, you, when you look at Pat Curran and just, you know, we talked about Tarek Safadine earlier, how Strike Force was kind of his platform where you saw him come from nothing and rise to the top. Pat Curran was a guy who every, all anyone knew was his brother or his cousin. Cousin, yeah. It was all about Jeff Curran, all about the big frog. And then Pat Curran comes along and he is a beast. And him fighting Patricky Pitbull, that's a just oh, fireworks. Fireworks written all over it. You got two guys never been stopped, they're just they're brawlers. And it's going to be a fun night of fights. Plus, you got guys like Babalu yep. making his debut in Strike Force. Uh, I mean, uh, in Strike Force, he didn't do too well, but hopefully, here in Bellator, he uh, nice he catch. rebounds. Nice save. Yeah, he he did. <laughs> he didn't do too well in Bellator. I mean, in Strike Force, see, I'm doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Babalu, he he he's with Bellator. Babalu with Bellator battling big bombs. <laughs> you like that? What's that? A tongue twister? I it definitely <laughs> is. I mean, and if, if you actually look at this card that Bellator has put together for their first night on Spike, you've got a lot of familiar names on here. I mean, Emmanuel Newton, Jason Lambert. These are all – Jamie Yeager. Petrozelli. Seth Petrozelli. These are all guys you know. So they're coming out, and they're, they're going to come out with a bang. Savant Young and, and, and Mike Gleiman, Joker. J.J. Brian, Ambrose. And I mean, Brian Warren. The Joker Guyman, exactly. I, I forgot he was on this card. Th this is a definitely a really good card. The only thing that sucks about it is is that 
le- all those fights aren't on TV. We only get three televised bouts. Well, that's because you got the title fight, but they are on Spike.com, uh, I believe. Spike.com. Watch the prelims. I, I, I'd really, I'm interested to see how it changes things up because, like I used to say, watching Bellator uh, on MTV2 kind of just had that old kung fu Saturday afternoon feel to it. It just felt like you were watching a really garbage production. And I, I'm hoping that that Spike, Spike cleans, it up. Clean, cleans it up a little bit because after this whole Eddie Alvarez thing, it's it's clear that I think Bellator has drawn their line in the sand. Oh, and, yeah. And they are ready to go to war with the UFC. Is it the smartest decision? No, but it's what they're doing. No, I, I don't think it's the smartest decision at all, but I think now they've got Spike in their corner. They have the platform that was proven successful. Spike is the channel that everyone associated with MMA, thanks to the UFC, the UFC brand and the Ultimate Fighter. But people still, when there's live fights on, they're watching on Spike. I, I was playing basketball, and this guy's like, did you see the fights last night? And I was like, yeah, Anderson and Chael was sick. He's like, no, Kimbo versus <laughs> – and he's talking about us uh, on Spike. And I'm like, that's from a couple of years ago. He's like, no, it was last night. And I'm like, okay, so this is what this is yeah, what but we got going on. I think that's over now, isn't it? No, it's it, – well, the thing is, I think it just ended – uh, the beginning of this year. It was the, the end of last year because the contract was until 2012. Correct, for the UFC. For the but, UFC. But what happened is you have people tuning in to Spike for their MMA needs. So those same people go to tune in again, and, oh, it's not, it's not the ultimate fight. Oh, it's a new one. What's this? You know, they acquired this fan base, this built-in fan base, who have been tuning in there to see MMA. That's the thing is that the, the, the common fan doesn't know what it is that they're looking at. It, well, like you said, whether it's a live fight, a taped fight, whether it's Bellator or it's the UFC. Right, you know, it's a uh, fight's a fight. You'd have to be a real, real like uh, mi- ill-informed fan. There not are to know the difference. There, there are many I mean, I, out there. You there know. are many out there, and it's not that they're ill-informed fans. It's new fans. You got to remember that this. We are in an era where there are new fans every single day. Absolutely, we're in a, we're in a time where. Years ago, they were. This was looked upon as just a brutal, nasty sport, and then you got like. Chad George, documentary coming out, people now realizing, hey, fighters aren't these barbaric, nasty, you know, hooligans that I thought they were. They're educated. They have a, you know, like Chuck Liddell, a business and accounting background. You know, not many people knew that about them. Now that that it's coming out into light and more and more fans are are learning about the sport, I I think it's continuous growth, but you're also going to have to deal with the fact that not a lot of them know what they're looking at. Right. It's just the way it is. All right, all right. Well, speaking of that, we have another. Uh, you guys want to get into that a little bit? The fight coming up this Saturday night. Save it for Friday. Yeah, we got it for Friday. But wait, actually, since we're talking about Be- uh, Bellator, Bjorn Remney today. Actually, I don't know uh, how many people out there were listening to the UFC at a press conference this morning or their their media call. Yeah. For uh, the UFC on Fox and Rampage Jackson fighting Glover Teixeira in his last UFC fight. Look at Armando shaking his head like, oh, are you sad about that, Armando? I'm a little disappointed, yes. A little cat. You a big right. Rampage fan? I'm not his fighting style per se, but uh, of him. Okay. I mean, he. I've had a lot of, de- you know, I've been to autograph signings that he's at. I, I love the way he has interacted with my family, my my two girls, uh, and things that he's done with us. So, I mean, it's. Nothing inappropriate. No, no of course not. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> motorboat you? No, he didn't, no, no. no. Do you have the uh, limited edition Blu-ray custom 18 pack? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I did. No. Yeah. Well, a- anyway. But yeah. So, so yeah. So Rampage. I just I just hope he doesn't get knocked out in the first round. That's just what I'm saying. Hey man, he's in this fight. When have you? S- uh, I don't. He's in every fight. No, and he's in this. Like uh, aside from not knowing what his training is like stylistically, he's got the pop in his punch to put any man to sleep and. And Glover looked like this uh, unstoppable wrecking machine up until his chin got touched, and we saw a little chink in the armor. We saw him go on bandy legs there for a second, but Maldonado clipped him. So Rampage is definitely in this fight. Rampage is in this fight, but the thing about Rampage is, is it all legacy now? Like, how much of the old Rampage is still there? I'm not sure, because all Rampage is talking about during this media call is, how this is his last fight, and he can't wait to go out there and test the waters and, and, and to be out, you know, as a free agent right away, Bjorn Rebney. Oh, I'd definitely be interested in, uh, in Rampage Jackson. But you know who he's not interested in? Josh Barnett. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. What, what do you think about, like, a guy like a Josh Barnett? I think it's the price tag that would come with him. 
and then the the, the tarnishment, the, what what's happened in his past, you know, a, a, a couple of different times failing the, the the urine test. I think th- you know the the piss exam. I don't think Bjorn wants destroying to do that. a fight league. You can't, no, you can't blame. You can't I blame can't that blame on that. I was so disappointed by that. That was the wo- was <laughs> that was the week from hell in yes. mixed martial arts. I, I that can't week blame was him. Awful. But let's go back to Rampage though, because I think the. It, I don't know what's going on with him, but I think his his making it abundantly clear that he wants to leave the UFC. He's not happy there. First of all, you're not going to get paid better or treated better anywhere, anywhere. Else, anywhere else in the world. But second of all, if that is your end game, your goal, you want to leave this organization for another one, why would you make it so publicly known? Because then you just show your hands to all, to all the other organization. You lose all your negotiation power. You know, you could have you could have had wanted nothing to do with the UFC, but not ten told Bellator that, not told the UFC that, have Bellator get into a, you know what I'm saying, a bidding war. I mean, just from leverage and negotiation standpoint, it seems like he just he just shot himself in the foot. Not only that, it actually makes him look like kind of a jerk for everything that the UFC did for him over the years. They stood behind him when he was going when through the rampage? worst of times. Quick prick prediction, Josh Barnett winds up a professional wrestler. Probably, yeah. yeah I'm with that. And, and Billy will be watching. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we want to thank, we want to thank our guest. You know, I won't be. Tarek Safadi. We want to thank Chad George for joining us as well. And we always want to thank you, the fight fan, and for all your exclusive MMA interviews and news. Go to MMAFightCorner.com. We're gonna see you right back here this Friday at five. See you then. Fox Sports Radio 920.